kids, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, I have a special state fair edition of everyone's favorite food, most people's favorite food, pork chops. These have a secret ingredient in the crust that pretty much makes it seem like you're just eating a big old pile of onion rings for dinner in the best way possible. Okay, so I've got a couple pork chops here. Three, I can't count. They're boneless, you could use bone in. I'm gonna do a little salt and pepper on them. And if you don't eat pork, you can totally use chicken. And if you don't eat either of those things, then I think you could even use seitan. And I'm gonna do a little fresh rosemary. Thyme is also nice, but I have rosemary like coming out of my ass. Kind of press that in. And you wanna make sure your pork chops aren't too thick. Definitely uh, no thicker than about an inch. And okay, so we'll set that aside for a second. We're gonna ne need some flour for our breading. We're gonna need some egg. Secret ingredient number one is a little bit of mustard that I'm gonna add to the egg. Oh lordy. Mustard, you're crazy. That mustard's crazy. Okay, and then finally, for the crunchy breading part, we're gonna use half panko breadcrumbs, which these are the Japanese ones that are a lot coarser than regular breadcrumbs. As you can see here, you can use regular ones if you can't find these, even though these are really easy to find most places now. Um, but the texture I, I like better for this. And then the secret ingredient is crispy fried onions. This was an idea that I got from Jennifer Lynn. Thanks, Jennifer. Commented on Facebook a while back. Um, that she uses this to bread meats and stuff. And if you made the SoCali dogs that I made earlier in the year, then you might have some of these in your pantry already. So I'm just gonna crumble them up a little bit. You wanna get it like almost as small as the panko crumbs if you can just so it'll coat more evenly if they're smaller pieces. Then we're just gonna do a little assembly. Let's see how I can do this without being a total idiot. Ha ha, good luck, self. Okay, so we're gonna do light flour dredge first. Go ahead and get the sides and everything. Then into our mustard egg. Then into our onion crumbs. And for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back on the same plate with the raw pork chops, but after we cook them, they'll go on their own plate, on a new plate. Yes. These are so good, you guys. You're gonna love it. And the deal when you're doing any kind of like breaded meat, like fried chicken fried steak or fried chicken or anything, is if you can let the breading stay for a little while. If you can just let them sit for a little while before you start frying them, the breading will stick better. I get a lot of people having problems with that with the chicken fried steak recipe that I made a while back. Um, and it's usually just, just need to let it kind of sit and let the egg sort of form that glue to hold everything on so it doesn't fall off while you're cooking. And also, if your oil temperature is too low, that will make breading fall off when you're frying things. Okay. Okay, once they're all breaded, and if you wanna make this ahead of time, you can do this and put it in the fridge for a couple of hours. I'm gonna go ahead and cook them now. But we're gonna go over to the stove and add about a quarter cup of oil over a medium high heat and cook them for just two to three minutes on each side with pork. I think the tendency is to overcook it because um, people are really concerned about undercooked pork, but I mean, the risk of trichinosis is very slim unless you're like eating wild beavers or something. So I like to do it just so it's a little bit pink inside so it still stays nice and juicy, but it's up to you. 
Ta-da! Yay, pork chop time. Don't forget to click this little red subscribe button right down here to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, so you get notified whenever I release a new cooking video. See, it's perfect. It's just a tiny bit pink right in the middle, still super juicy, and the aroma of that rosemary is just hitting me all in my face. And these are some really delicious fried pork chops. I hope that you tried this recipe. Chicken with seitan, do whatever you want. I don't give a shit. The recipe is always available at my website, highlycooking.com. Be sure to check out my chicken fried steak and my chicken milanesa video for a couple of similar things that you might enjoy. Have a great weekend and I'll see you later, bye.